The movie begins by showing a little girl named Nam Jia with her father, Nam Jong Su, and mother, Lee Young Soon, driving toward their house. On the way, Jia is very happy after her mother gives her a music box. Not long after, a strange thing suddenly made all the street lights go out. Under dark conditions, they felt something hit the car and caused them to have an accident. When Jia wakes up from fainting, she realizes that the car her family was traveling in has overturned, and both people are unconscious. Moments later, Jia sees her parents outside the car to save her. She is confused about who her real parents are, and she is unconscious again. When Jia woke up, she was now in her house with her father and mother. However, she finds it odd that the music box her mother gave her is broken, and she notices a bloodstain on her shirt, indicating that the previous accident was not a dream. She asks her mother for walnut cookies to ensure the two people in the house are her parents. When the woman who claims to be her mother is in the kitchen, Jia stabs the woman because she realizes that the woman at home is not her mother. After all, her mother would never give her walnut cookies. After that, two people there chase Jia, so she ran to her room to hide. Not long after, she hears a fight outside, but because she is terrified, she chooses to stay in her room. As the fight ended, a man named Lee Yon, carrying a red umbrella, entered the room and erased Jia's memory of all that had happened. Suddenly, Jia is back at the scene of her family's accident, and it seems that many police have come to conduct an inspection. However, she cannot find her parents, which makes her very sad. 21 years later, Yon is seen getting ready to leave. He is a nine-tailed fox demon assigned to hunt demons that roam the world while waiting for the arrival of his girlfriend, whom he has been waiting for hundreds of years. Then he goes to a wedding and meets the bride, the incarnation of a fox demon. <laughs> After Yon kills the bride, he erases everyone's memories in that place and makes them remember that the bride has run away from the wedding. Moments later, all the guests exited the wedding hall after having their memories altered. Among the guests, Jia, who has now grown up, accidentally sees Yon coming out of the wedding hall. She looked at Yon, who had saved her 21 years ago, but he didn't notice it and passed her. Jia is now working as a producer for a supernatural show, and she feels something is wrong with the bride's departure, so she checks the bride's dress, which had previously turned to dust. Then she found some hairs on the wedding dress and handed them to a veterinarian named Gu Xinju for identification. From the identification results, Xinju informed that the fur sample was that of the long-extinct Mount Sobak fox. Meanwhile, Yon sees a woman named Taluipa, an afterlife gatekeeper. He looks annoyed at her because he has been eliminating demons for 600 years but has yet to find the woman he is looking for. Taluipa replied that it was a consequence that he had to do because he had once begged to save a woman that he loved. At the Fox restaurant, Shinju is seen having lunch with Yon. As it turns out, he is Yon's loyal servant, so he tells Yon that Jia has been investigating the fox fur she found on the wedding dress of the demon that Yon killed. Not only that, he showed that Yon was one of the people Jia was looking for through the television program she handled. At the same time, Jia and all of her colleagues investigate the bride's mysterious disappearance at the previous wedding and Yon's suspicious behavior at the party. During the investigation, a man claims to know about the mysterious man's identity with the red umbrella she is investigating. Because of that, Jia met a man named Lee Rong at a cafe. Rong, who is Yon's younger brother, reveals that Yon is a demon who will not age. However, she doesn't believe his words, which have a hidden plan for Yon, so he has to involve her. In a parking lot, Rong calls Yon to warn his older brother. Yon, who received the call, looked annoyed with his younger brother's actions. At night, Jia waits for the last bus running for the night at a bus stop with a high school girl. Not far from the bus stop, an old man was drunk. However, when the last bus arrived, the old man suddenly grabbed her leg, so she had to be willing to miss the last bus that night. At the same time, she sees Yon on the bus. Not long after, Jia decided to carry and accompany the old man to his house. Arriving at a place, she drops him off, and the old man says he saved her life. Hearing this, she thought something bad would happen to all the bus passengers, so she stopped a taxi to get to the bus. Surprisingly, when she was about to get into the taxi, the old man she had escorted disappeared. On the bus, when it is in a tunnel, the lights suddenly go out, and Yon, who is at that place, looks at the middle school girl and attacks her. Because of the attack, the bus seemed to roll over, causing an accident. Jia, who had just arrived at the bus crash site, was shocked after seeing all the passengers on the bus dead except for a high school girl she had met at the bus stop. On the other hand, Yon was seen walking home in an injured condition. At the accident site, Jia, who had been picked up by one of her colleagues, said that there should have been one more passenger on the bus, but that passenger had disappeared even though there was no other bus stopping from the previous stop heading to the tunnel. 
Because of this, Jia goes to a high school girl who survived the accident to ask about Yeon who is still known as the man with the red umbrella. Upon seeing a photo of Yeon using a red umbrella, the middle school girl looks terrified and says the man is coming to kill her. After hearing this, Jia decides to take her home so that she is safer and avoids death threats. At the hospital, Yeon comes to meet the high school girl, but she has left the hospital and is at Jia's house, as written in a letter that the girl left with the nurse. Meanwhile, Jia starts asking the girl about the chronology of the bus accident. However, the girl told the opposite incident from reality, so Jia, who knew about it, threatened her. Soon after, the girl transforms into Rong and is about to attack Jia. Luckily, Yeon comes to her house and saves her. At the same time, Jia has installed surveillance cameras in her house so that all the fighting scenes between Rong and Yeon have been recorded. After Rong manages to escape, Yeon seems to approach Jia and hypnotizes her into forgetting about the incident. In the morning, Jia, who has Yeon's fingerprints, plans to meet him. At night, Yeon, who had just arrived at his residence, was shocked by a recording of him fighting with Rong to save Jia. He saw Jia on his apartment's balcony carrying a copy of the tape file. As it turns out, Yeon's hypnosis doesn't work on Jia. When he asks for a copy of the tape, she refuses to provide a copy of the file and throws herself off the balcony. Yeon, who saw that, saved her. Meanwhile, Jia feels happy because her suspicions have been true that Yeon is not a human. Not long after, she injects him with an anesthetic that knocks him unconscious. Switching to hundreds of years ago, Yeon lives as a nine-tailed fox demon who rules the mountains. One day, a girl named Aiyam wakes him up, who is sleeping under a tree. From that meeting, she went to the mountains every day to meet him until they both fell in love. One time, Aiyam, who had grown up, had to die because of a tragedy, and before her spirit would go to the afterlife, Yeon met her to give her his fox grain so he could meet Aiyam when she was reincarnated in the future. After hundreds of years, Yeon has yet to find her fox grain. In the present, after Yeon wakes up from fainting, he tries to scare Jia by saying he is a nine-tailed fox demon. Unfortunately, she isn't scared and asks him to help her find her parents' whereabouts, but he refuses, so she puts a copy of the footage of Yeon fighting into a cup. Jia says that the tape evidence revealing Yeon's identity has been tampered with, and he now owes her a debt of gratitude. She adds that a fox demon must repay her debt and requests that he help her find her parents. To repay Jia, Yeon meets Taliupa and asks about Jia's parents. From the notes, she does not find Jia's parents' names in the list of human spirits who have gone to the afterlife. That way, there is a possibility that her parents are still alive. When Yeon meets Jia and tells her about this, she is happy because there is still a chance that she can find her parents. A few days later, Jia is seen helping Yeon to capture a dream demon at a recording studio in her office. At night, she tries to lure the demon by throwing some coins around the recording studio. When the dream demon comes, Yeon attacks the demon until it is helpless. The next day, a group of fishermen looking for fish were surprised to find a skull in the fishing net they found. Then the fishermen paid their last respects to the deceased until they suddenly realized they knew the skull's owner and reported it to the police. Sometime later, a woman named Jin Hae was seen crying after learning that her father, Jin Seo, had died due to drowning in the ocean. On the other hand, Yeon, who has caught the demon in a dream, locks the demon in the refrigerator to force the demon to tell him about Rong's whereabouts. After getting information about his whereabouts, Yeon meets his younger brother at a port where Jin Seo's skull was found. Meanwhile, Jia is now heading to an island where Jin Seo's skull was found and investigating the supernatural television show she handles. When she boards a ship, Jia meets Yeon, who is going to the island. Arriving on the island, Jia interviews Jin Hee, daughter of the late Jin Seo. Jia and Yeon then go to a place on the island. Arriving at a cave by the beach, she realizes that in the past, her parents had visited the place when she was still in her mother's womb. Jia tries to trace the place and suddenly sees a man running scared, so she tries to chase him to ask what happened. However, the man attacks her instead, and, luckily, Yeon comes to help her. Because she was injured before, Yeon gave him herbal medicine from crushed leaves to treat her wound. However, when he was treating the wound, Jia suddenly seemed possessed and tried to strangle him while asking why he killed her. Twelve hours earlier, while it was still dark, a villager looked so thirsty that he had to drink water from the toilet and died after getting his head stuck in the toilet. The next morning, Jia tries to investigate the man's death and finds a clump of hair in the toilet where he died. On the other hand, there is a man who looks very scared while saying that Jin Seo's spirit met him. 
Meanwhile, in another place, a man is seen eating non-stop, like someone starving. Jia and Yeon then come to his place to ask about Jin Seo's death. The man recounted that a month ago, he, Jin Seo, and two of his colleagues were trapped in the middle of the ocean without eating or drinking. To save themselves, they ended up killing and eating Jin Seo who had been injured, so they could survive. Not long after finishing his story, he choked on a clump of hair and died. On the beach, Jin Hee, sad because her father was killed, was seen carrying out a ritual to kill the three men who had killed and eaten her father. Then she asks Rong's help to avenge her father. Meanwhile, Yeon and Jia, who already know the truth, go to another man who was previously scared because Jin Seo's spirit was haunting him. Unfortunately, they do not find him, but they find a painting of a dragon without legs, indicating that the painting is an emugi or snake demon. On the other hand, Rong came to a well in the middle of the forest where a dark spirit was sealed. A shaman assists him in awakening the spirit. At the same time, Yeon, who feels something bad will happen, asks Jia to return to the city, but she refuses, so she becomes the victim of an attack by a man in the middle of the forest. When Yeon was treating Jia, Yeon, who knew she was possessed by a spirit, tried to revive her. Not long after, Rong comes there and tries to attack Jia, so Yeon tries to protect her. When they fight, Jia tries to escape until she meets a woman, a shaman who works with Rong to awaken the spirit of darkness. The shaman then arrests Jia. On the other hand, Rong tells his older brother that Jia will be used as an offering to awaken the dark spirit. After knowing this, Yeon tries to find her until he asks the forest lord for help to give him clues. Suddenly, a collection of fireflies then appears and gives way to where Jia is being held captive. The shaman who had bound Jia was seen sharpening a knife to be used to kill and put her into the sacred well. The shaman sprinkled rose pollen so Yeon couldn't cross the barrier, and thwart her plan. As the shaman is about to kill Jia, Yeon comes there, but he cannot get past the pollen barrier, so he tries to send down rain to remove the barrier, and kill the shaman. Shortly after, Yeon saves Jia, who was injured and almost fell into a well. When they leave, Jia's blood on the edge of the well starts to drip into the well because of the rain. Arriving at the inn, Jia asks why Yeon saved her. Even though he didn't explain anything, she was grateful because he always saved her, including when Yeon saved her when she was little. At the same time, all the villagers look like they are in hypnosis and go to the sacred well. Meanwhile, Rong is seen handing over a baby with spell paper attached to a man named Hai Rayong. The next day, Jia tells Yeon that all the villagers have suddenly disappeared. Then they go to the beach and see something strange on the beach, and Yeon says that it's all Imug is doing. In her office, Taliupa learns Yeon has killed a human and experiences the awakening of an Imugi. Some time passed, and Yeon had returned to the city. Meanwhile, at a restaurant, Yuri reports her successful approach to Rong. As it turns out, Rong asked Yuri to approach Shinju to get information about Yeon. He tried to provoke Yeon's anger by saying that the spirit that was in the sacred well before was an Imugi. All this time, he has been trying to provoke Yeon's anger because he grudges against his older brother, who used to punish him after he killed the people who destroyed the mountain. After meeting Rong, Yeon goes to Taliupa's place to receive punishment for killing a human to save the girl who is Aiyam's reincarnation. Then Taliupa warns that he shouldn't have anything to do with the reincarnated girl he once loved because it could be disastrous. As if he didn't listen to the advice, Yeon, who is about to get punished, suddenly says goodbye to meet Jia to have dinner together. Arriving at Jia's house, Yeon gives her a bunch of vegetables to thank her for inviting him to dinner. She is very happy about that and strokes Yeon's head, so he remembers Aiyam, who used to do the same thing to him in the past. On the other hand, Rong meets Hai Rayong, who turns out to have saved his life after being nearly killed by Yeon. Surprisingly, despite being a human, Hai Rayong has a very long life. Meanwhile, Jia, who is with Yeon, says that she is going to her friend's mother's funeral. Thus, when they pass a convenience store, Yeon buys a bag of red beans for her as a talisman. After that, Yeon went to meet Taliupa to carry out his sentence on an iceberg for seven days, where one day on the mountain is the same as seven years in the world. When she arrived at her friend's mother's funeral, Jia met Rong who told her about Yeon's past, and told her that she was the reincarnation of Yeon's former girlfriend, that Yeon was now willing to be punished for killing a human to save her. When Jia asks where Yeon is, Rong doesn't answer, and instead, he rips open a red bean bag that is her talisman, so she is followed by a child ghost. Not long after, Jia realizes that her talisman pouch has been torn open, and she begins to be harassed by the ghosts of small children following her. At Yeon's punishment place, he feels that Jia has lost her talisman, so he asks Taliupa to finish the punishment. However, because she refused, Yeon opted for a more severe knife hell punishment so he could return to the world more quickly. 
Meanwhile, Jia is followed by many child ghosts who wander to corner her on top of a building. At the same time, Yeon is being punished under the knife, which leaves him badly injured. Just as Jia fell from the roof of the building, Yeon finished his sentence and rescued her with a badly injured body. Seeing this, she cries, and her tears suddenly turn into grains of a fox's soul, making Yeon happy because he found his first love reincarnated. Because Yeon was injured, Jia took care of him at his house. In the morning, Shin Ju rushes to see Yeon after hearing that he is seriously injured. At that time, Shin Ju told Jia that he was Yeon's loyal follower. When Yeon and Jia are alone, they talk about Aiyam, who used to want to kill his father, the king who was an Imugi. However, when Jia wants to know more about the story, Yeon says that she doesn't need to know that. Meanwhile, the baby Ron gave to Hai Rayong has now become a boy. To feed the boy, the incarnation of the evil spirit, Hai Rayong pretends to hire a nanny who will later be absorbed by his human energy until the nanny dies. <gasps> On the street, when Rong is out with Yuri, he suddenly hears the sound of a dog in pain because of being disturbed by a group of boys. Then they rush to save the dog and teach the children a lesson. <laughs> After beating up a group of boys, Rong sees the dog, which reminds him of the dog Yon gave him in the past that had to die from a fire. Several days later, Yeon visits Taliupa to ask about the whereabouts of Jia's parents. From her information, she can't find them in this world or the afterlife, which makes Yeon even more confused. Meanwhile, Hai Rayong, a director at Jia's work company, appreciates her work and her team. On the other hand, Yeon meets the drunk man who once saved Jia from a bus accident. As it turned out, the man was a totem spirit, so Yeon asked him about Jia's parents. After taking a few hits from Yeon, the totem spirit tells him about Sado. Not long after, Yeon suddenly appears and takes Jia away while she is having lunch with her colleagues. On the other hand, Rong met the totem spirit to ask about the tiger's eyebrows. The totem was forced to provide this information because he was beaten by Rong. It turns out that Yeon takes Jia to a traditional tourist spot to meet Sado, a mountain spirit often seen at the tourist spot. Due to being on a traditional tour, Jia was interested in wearing traditional clothes, hanbok. Not long after, Yeon catches an arrow that flies and brings a letter containing an invitation from Sado to meet. After they meet, Sato, Yon's old friend, fights with him to relieve their homesickness. <laughs> After that, he asked Sato about Jia's parents. On the other hand, Rong met a fortune teller at a traditional tourist spot to give him a pair of tiger eyebrows in the shape of glasses. However, the fortune teller refused to exchange the glasses for money, and he asked Rong for something more valuable. Hearing this, Rong called Yon, but Yon, who was with Sato, did not pick up the call. Sato then explains that a human with a long life has caused the accident. He added that the main target of the accident was Jia, not her parents. He reminds Yon that Jia has some of Imuga's spirit scales which makes Yon remember when Jia strangled him the other day. After that, they met Rong, who was at the fortune teller's place. It turns out that Rong swapped Yeon for tiger eyebrow glasses, so the fortune teller put him into a container. Then Jia tried to save Yeon by giving the fox grains in her body, making her hand lines change. When Yeon was successfully released, he met Taliupa who told him Imugi had been resurrected after Jia's blood entered the sacred well. On the other hand, Jia dreams of meeting an Imugi incarnated boy. Without realizing it, snake scales appear on her neck. At Taliupa's place, she told Yeon that the fox grains on Jia's body had disappeared, so he met Jia at her house. Jia says she gave the fox drops to someone else, thinking they weren't that important. Yeon says she will be in danger if the fox grains are lost. Shortly after, she tells about a dream she just had, which makes Yeon even more worried, and he decides to stay over at her house because he wants to take care of her. Meanwhile, a drunk Rong is saved elsewhere by a boy named Suo just before he is hit by a motorbike. Rong, who looked annoyed, just left there. Meanwhile, Suo seems to pick up his fallen glasses. The next day, Yeon, who wants to keep an eye on Jia, goes to work at her office and waits for her in the lobby. On the other hand, Hai Rayong calls a new nanny who will serve as food for Imugi. After Imugi ate her, he turned into a man. Meanwhile, Jia, at work, keeps thinking about what Sato said about the mark on someone's face that had caused an accident to her family. On the other hand, Yeon, worried about Rong's condition, asks Shin Ju to keep an eye on him, who is now looking for his missing tiger eyebrow glasses. When Rong finds out that Shin Ju is watching him, Shin Ju is beaten to a pulp by him. At the same time, Yeon, who is with Jia and company, suddenly leaves after he gets a picture of a battered Shin Ju from Rong. When Yeon confronts Rong, he is annoyed and asks why Yeon asked Shin Ju to keep an eye on him. 
Yeon doesn't answer the question and asks why Rong used Imugi to hurt him. He tries to advise Rong not to make deals with bad people. He reminds Rong not to touch Jia. Not long after, Rong got a call from Yuri, who had found Suo, a child who had taken his glasses, so he left there. On the street, Suo bumps into Jia and her friends. When he wears the glasses, he can see someone's past, and he looks terrified after seeing Jia. Suo, who was running out of fear, was suddenly caught by Rong. Then he took the glasses and learned that Suo was the reincarnation of his former black dog. Even though he was initially annoyed, he gave in and took Suo to a restaurant. At night, Jia and her friends are invited to dinner at Hai Rayong's house. Arriving at the house, he told her two important rules in his house, which were not allowed to touch the flowers of life and were not allowed to go up to the top floor. At dinner, Jia asks permission to go to the toilet. As she passed the stairs leading upstairs, she heard a strange sound, so she went upstairs. In the hallway towards the sound, she finds a fake nail and picks it up. When she is about to head into the room, suddenly Hai Rayong appears while lying that it's the sound of a window that he hasn't closed, even though it's the voice of a woman being eaten by Imugi. Shortly after, Jia returns to the dinner table and notices that neither of them is wearing fake nails, so she recounts the incident to her colleagues on their way home. Meanwhile, Ron calls Yon after he sends Jia a parcel of tiger eyebrow glasses. Yon panics upon hearing this, and he goes to Jia's house. At her house, Jia is seen trying on glasses sent by Rong in front of a mirror until she finds out that in the past, Hai Rayong was an Imugi servant who took Aiyam to the palace to meet her father, who had been controlled by Imugi. Aiyam tried to kill her father, but she refused, and her father then asked her to sacrifice Yon. Because Yon, as a mountain spirit, cannot leave the mountain, Imugi uses her body to go to the mountain, and there Aiyam is killed by Yon because he knows that Imugi resides in her body. After Yon came to Jia's house, she was very disappointed with his attitude and using Aiyam to kill Imugi. He reasoned that he was forced to do that to save many people from the crimes that Imugi would commit, even though he had to kill the woman he really loved. Yon then meets Rong to ask about Imugi's whereabouts. However, Rong refused to provide any information about this, so he chose to leave there. Before leaving, Yon apologizes to Rong because he once saved Rong from being attacked by zombies after Rong was abandoned by his mother in the forest, making them brothers. Hearing this, Rong remembers how Yon saved him, and he decides to follow Yon to become a complete demon fox. The next day, at Hai Rayong's house, he looks so sick he has to inhale the flower of life in his house. Apparently, the flower of life makes him have a very long life. Not long after, Rong met Imugi and asked the demon to kill Jia so that Yon would feel as tormented as him. However, Imugi can't do that because Jia was born to be his wife in the present day. At the office, Jia realizes that her two colleagues, Jai Huan and Sai Ram, were her servants in the past. Not long after, they went to have lunch together at the Fox restaurant. Arriving at the restaurant, the owner seemed to be expelling a customer named Duk Sini, who had killed her husband because she could make everyone she touched trapped in their fear. After Duk Sini was kicked out of the restaurant, she came to Rong and held his hand to show his biggest fear. Moments later, Rong, who had chased her away, heard a child's voice coming from inside his wardrobe, so he opened the wardrobe. Suddenly, Rong was in front of his house in the past, where the residents attacked him because he was born as a human half-fox. He knew his mother was in the house, but she didn't seem to care about her son being beaten by the residents. Suddenly, Rong moved back to a forest, where he met zombies that he had to defeat, like when he was a child in the past. On the other hand, Jia, who has returned to the office, is visited by Duk Sini. After Duk Sini holds Jia's hand, she hears children's voices and goes to a door until Jia is suddenly in the car with her parents. Jia realizes they will have an accident, so she tries to stop her father. However, it seems in vain because he ignores her. At the same time, Duk Sini meets Yon and asks him to save Rong or Jia. He realizes that Duk Sini is getting orders from Imugi, so he chooses to kill her. However, she says that Yon won't be able to because if she dies, then Rong and Jia will be stuck in their place forever. Because of that, Yon chose one of the doors in front of him. Meanwhile, Rong looks overwhelmed by the many zombies that are there. When he thought that Yon would choose to save Jia, suddenly, Rong saw Yon coming to help him in that place. Then they try to escape from the pursuit of the zombies to a safer place. Meanwhile, Jia is still trying to stop her parents, and the accident occurs after she gets a music box. Not far from the crash site, Imugi and Duxini are observing everything that is going on. Imugi realizes that Yon prefers to save his younger brother because he knows that Jia must try to get out of her subconscious with her own consciousness. At the office, her colleagues panic after seeing Jia pass out. At the same time, Yon is found unconscious by Shinju, and Rong, who has fainted, is helped by Yuri. It turned out that the souls of the three of them were currently still trapped within the world created by Duxini. 
Inside Rong's subconscious, Yeon and Rong find a hiding place, and when Rong asks why Yeon chose to save him, Yeon simply replies that he chose the wrong door. On the other hand, Shin Ju takes Yeon's body to a fox restaurant because he is worried and confused about what to do. Then the restaurant owner says that only Yeon can save himself. In Jia's subconscious, she is awakened by her mother. Jia, wanting to confirm that the woman in front of her is her mother, asks a few questions. Hearing her mother answer all the questions correctly, she was very moved because she had met her mother again. Meanwhile, Yeon continues to lead Rong while looking for the exit from there. By the time Rong had seen the exit, the zombies had come, so he had pushed Rong to get his younger brother out of there while he held off the zombies. After Rong emerged from his subconscious, he woke up and attempted to go back in and save Yeon. Unfortunately, he could not do so, as he had been badly injured from the previous zombie attack. Shin Ju, who wanted to help Yeon, came to Taliupa's place to ask about how to save Yeon. At first, Taliupa refuses to tell Shin Ju anything until he falls to his knees, pleading that he will do whatever it takes to find a way to save Yeon. Not long after, he gets a red cloth from Taliupa. Meanwhile, Jia, who is in her room, notices that her room is slightly different. Suddenly, she heard dripping water dripping from an IV drip because her colleagues brought her to the hospital after she did not wake up from fainting. Not long after, Zhang Su walks into the room, and Jia is very happy to see her father again. On the other hand, Shin Ju takes Jia's body from the hospital secretly and takes her to a fox restaurant. After her body is placed beside Yeon's body, Shin Ju ties their fingers with the red cloth he previously got from Taliupa. In Jia's subconscious, she hears a phone ring and picks up Yeon's call. He asks her to come back because he's always waiting for her. Yeon reminds her that she is not in the real world and only she can save herself. When the call ended, Jia took something and thrust it into her hand so she could remember all the memories with Yeon. With that memory in mind, she goes to her parents and says goodbye to leaving. Even though her parents tried to restrain Jia, she came out of the house and woke up from her faint. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that Yuri was sad because he saw Rong who was seriously injured, Shinju was willing to treat all of his wounds and said that he did it because he didn't want to see Yuri constantly crying. Moments later, Rong woke up and asked where Yon was. Shinju said that Yon still hadn't woken up. On the other hand, Duk Sini is furious that Rong and Jia managed to get out of the trap she had set. Meanwhile, Yon, who has been in his subconscious, begins to lose energy until he faints from fear when he loses Jia and has to live alone. When Yon fainted, Duk Sini approached him to wake him up. As she is about to leave, he asks Duk Sini about Jia. She arrogantly says that Jia has survived and that only Yon will die alone. After hearing that, Yon looks happy because his plan to lure Duk Sini into his subconscious has succeeded. Then he tells her the biggest fear that makes Duk Sini angry and intends to leave. However, she seemed unable to escape that place because she had just realized that she was in Yon's subconscious and couldn't do what she wanted. She is eventually killed by Yon, and Imuga's plan to kill him fails. In the morning, when Jia goes to work, it suddenly rains. At the same time, she sees Yon across the street with a red umbrella, making her happy, knowing he is safe. After that, Yon takes Jia to a hill to pick up a gift box that Aiyam gave him in the past and gives it to her. He tells about Aiyam, who saved him when the residents chased him. He promises to repay her kindness, creating a contract between them. Meanwhile, Imugi plans to take Yon's body so he can marry Jia. At the hill, Yon asks why Jia doesn't seem to want to know his reason for killing Aiyam. She only replied that she already knew that Aiyam had asked him to kill her, so Imugi inside her body would die. With the contract made, his body moves on its own, and Yon kills Aiyam. After she was killed, Yon fulfilled his promise to her. Jia then holds his hand and thanks him for waiting for her all this time. At Rong's house, he looks so sick because his life is running out, so he tries to solve the problem he made with Imugi. Meanwhile, Yon was heading to Rong's house and brought his favorite flower. Rong, who is in pain, goes to Hai Rayong's house to meet Imugi. Unfortunately, Imugi is not there, and he only meets Hai Rayong who seems to offer his flower of life so that he can live longer. However, Rong rejected him and attempted to kill him right there. Then he reminds Rong that they are both bound by a contract that Rong has not paid for after he saved Rong in the past. 
At the same time, Yon arrives at Rong's house, but he can't meet Rong, so he leaves the flowers he brought for Yuri to give to Rong. At Hai Rayong's house, Rong appears to have walked out. Not far away, Shin Ju, who has followed him, is curious about the house. At the restaurant, Jia tells Jai Huan and Sai Ram about their pass through tiger eyebrow glasses. After they believed what Jia said, she explained that there was an evil spirit around them, so she asked them to always be vigilant. Rong, who has returned home, is greeted by Yuri who tells him about Yon's arrival and the flowers that Yon gave to him. When he saw the flower, Rong became very sad because he didn't know what to do to save Yon from Imugi. Meanwhile, in a building, the police are seen conducting an investigation after finding the woman's body embedded in the wall. The next day, Hai Rayong is surprised by Yon asking about Imugi. He says he doesn't know about this, so Yon threatens to kill him if he doesn't tell about it. Meanwhile, Rong is now meeting Taliupa to ask about how to cancel the contract that has been bound. Then she simply replied that the contract could be terminated by death. Taliupa's husband, Uyang, who heard Rong's question, reminded Rong not to break the contract. He says that every contract has loopholes that can be used to help Rong avoid paying the debt. At Jia's office, Imugi disguises herself as an intern named Terry and joins Jia's team. Then he informs Jia about the news of a body found in a building. After that, she invites him to go to that location. Arriving at the location, Jia sees the same fake nails she found at Hai Rayong's house earlier. Because of this, she goes to Hai Rayong and asks who the murdered woman is. Hai Rayong, who couldn't avoid it, showed his true identity, which surprised her because he had a mark on his forehead like the person she had been looking for because he caused her parents to disappear. Hai Rayong says he can return her parents if she brings Yon to him. On the other hand, Imugi, who is meeting with Yon, asks him to hand over his body if he wants to save everyone. Hearing the request, Yon refused. Soon after, Imugi provokes him so that he becomes angry, and Imugi hypnotizes people to make them dead. At the same time, Jia feels the pain of being connected to Imugi. Hai Rayong, who knows this, is very happy and asks her to give Yon a potion so that she can meet her parents. At Taliupa's office, she received a notification informing her that so many people had died in the city. Uyang realized that this was Imugi's doing. Meanwhile, Jia, who is at home, is still unsure whether to choose between her parents or Yon. The next day, Rong was walking alone until he came to an alley and accidentally ran into Suno, who was beaten by his stepfather. Rong then knocks Suno's stepfather unconscious and takes him to Hai Rayong's house. Rong wants to know how Hai Rayong turns people into the flowers of life that he plants in his house. After seeing this, he called Yuri to ask about Yon's whereabouts. It turns out that Yon and Jia are meeting with Taliupa to ask about Jia's parents. Taliupa is furious that Jia and Yon dare to come together. Jia says that she will not give up on fate. She reveals that she wants to be reunited with her parents. And in return, she will catch Imugi. With her courage, Taliupa looked amazed at her. As Yon and Taliupa talk alone, Yon asks if there's a way to free Jia from Imugi. She explains that there is no other way than Jia's death. Even so, Yon insists that he will protect Jia no matter what. Before he leaves, Taliupa tells him that Jia's parents are in the flower of life that Hai Rayong kept. As a confused Rong is about to give up his or Yon's life, Yon calls him to ask about the flower of life that Hai Rayong has kept. Rong is sad that Yon is always thinking about Jia, so he decides to lure Yon and takes him to Hai Rayong's house. The next day, Rong and Yon met at a cafe. Hai Rayong appears to be watching the meeting via surveillance cameras. Then Rong put a potion into Yon's teacup. After he came and was about to drink the tea, Rong asked about the meaning of his life. Yon replies that Rong is family. After he drank the tea, he passed out and was brought to Hai Rayong's house. Meanwhile, Imugi seemed to be chatting with Jia and her colleagues. During the break, they all invited Imugi to have lunch together as a welcome for his joining the team. Suddenly, he comes out, so Jia scolds him for leaving without saying goodbye. She asks him to log back in and join the others. Meanwhile, Rong asks Hai Rayong to end their previous deal. However, he says he must kill Yon before he ends his contract with Rong. When he was about to kill Yon, Rong kicked him. After that, Rong, who was in front of Hai Rayong, turned into Yon. 
It turns out that Yeon and Rong have planned everything, and now Yeon threatens Hai Rayong so that he ends the contract that was made with Rong. Hai Rayong, who is afraid, ends the contract so that the contract bond disappears. On the other hand, Jia tries to keep Imugi busy while Yeon and Rong carry out the plan. Imugi realized this and started threatening her. However, Jia doesn't seem afraid of him because she knows he needs her, so he can't possibly kill her. Then Imugi confirmed this because he really liked her. When Jia arrived home, Yeon brought her together with her parents, who had been successfully removed from Hai Rayong's Flower of Life. She is very happy because she can meet her parents again. At night, Jia sleeps with her parents, and she dreams of meeting Imugi again who shows her neck is starting to fill with scales. Jia, who had woken up, was frightened and checked in the mirror, but she didn't see any scales like in her dream. After learning that Imugi had come home, Hai Rayong left the house to avoid him. On the way, he calls Hai Rayong and asks about his whereabouts and his missing flower of life. But Hai Rayong reasons that he's still outside. Meanwhile, Yeon, looking for a way to catch Imugi, visibly calls Hai Rayong to meet. The next day, Jia told about her dream last night. Yeon tries calming her down and says he will catch Imugi soon. After arriving at the Fox restaurant, Yeon asks Jai Huan and Sai Ram to help him discover the various legends about Imugi so he can find Imugi's weaknesses. Once, Imugi hypnotized Yuri to kill Rong when he ran into her. Not long after, Yuri met Rong and stabbed him until he was unconscious. When Yuri starts to wake up, she calls Shin Ju to treat Rong. Shin Ju, knowing that Rong's condition was critical, then suggested he use the flower of life that Yeon had taken from Hai Rayong's house, but Yeon did not agree. The next day, Yuri secretly takes the flower of life from Yeon's house and is going to give it to Rong. Unfortunately, the flower of life withers so quickly that Yuri cannot give it to him. At the same time, Yeon realizes that Yuri has taken part in a stalk of the flower of life. Not long after, Hai Rayong comes to his house to get the flower of life. Meanwhile, Jai Huan and Sai Ram, who had been researching Imugi, discovered that he hated horse blood, so they both told Yeon. Suddenly, Imugi arrives and hypnotizes them. Meanwhile, Hai Rayong, who is at Yeon's house, explains that to kill Imugi, he must perform the same ritual as when awakening the dark spirit. On the other hand, Imugi orders Jai Huan and Sai Ram to go to a rooftop. He used this to threaten Jia so she would go on a date with him. Before Jia goes to meet him, she tells him about her two colleagues who were hypnotized by Imugi. At a restaurant, Imugi asks Jia to help him catch Yeon. At the same time, Yeon goes to the Fox restaurant to soak his hands in the horse blood that the restaurant owner has prepared. Back to Jia, she seemed to refuse Imuga's request. However, he threatens to make Jai Huan and Sai Ram jump off the roof, so she can't refuse the request. On the other hand, Shinju is assigned by Yeon to look for Jai Huan and Sai Ram, who have been hypnotized by Imugi, and he finds them standing on the roof of a building. After finishing dinner, Imugi seemed to be walking alone with Jia. Then he asks for her answer to his declaration of love to her. However, Jia says that her love has run out for Yeon. An angry Imugi intends to harm Jia, but at the same time, Yeon comes to help her. Imugi then asks Jai Huan and Sai Ram to jump from the building. Luckily, Shin Ju reached the roof of the building and managed to save them before they both jumped. After that, Yeon pushed Imugi over a pool of water, and Jia dripped her blood into the pool to summon lightning that could kill him. However, after the lightning strikes, Imugi seems fine because the main part of him is in Jia's body. Because of this, Jia looks in pain, and when Yeon approaches, her body has scaled and turned into an Imugi figure. Suddenly, Jia's body, controlled by Imugi, attacks Yeon and stabs something into his chest. Yeon, who knows that Imugi's main power is in Jia's body, then tries to wake her up. When Jia wakes up, she cries and asks him to kill her. Hai Rayong, who had told Yeon how to kill Imugi, was able to get back the flower of life. Suddenly, he was surprised by Uyang's presence in the backseat. Knowing that Uyang wanted the flower of life, Hai Rayong shot him. Unfortunately, the gunshots could not injure him, and the flower of life was snatched away from Hai Rayong. When Hai Rayong is angry because the flower of life has been taken by someone else, suddenly Imugi appears in front of his car. Then he begs Imugi's forgiveness for losing the flower of life. After that, Imugi hypnotized him, so he turned himself into the police and confessed to all the crimes that Imugi had committed. On the other hand, Taliwipa plans to stop the chaos by shortening Jia's life. However, she remembered Yeon's words that she wanted to protect Jia, so she failed. Meanwhile, in another place, Yeon, who saw Jia's body starting to show a lot of scales, tried to calm her by taking her to the beach. In the morning, Jia gets a call from Imugi telling her that sooner or later, his spirit inside her body will completely take over her. 
Meanwhile, Uyang looks angry after seeing that his wife will change Jia's death. He reminds her that they once lost their son because she changed their son's death date. Then he threatens to end their relationship if Taluapa hastens Jia's death. Meanwhile, Yuri, who is desperate, chooses to ask Imugi for help so that Rong can be saved. Then Imugi agreed to this and left a flower of life for Rong, on the condition that Rong would become his warrior after his true power had been awakened. Moments later, Rong came to his senses. While crying, Suo tells him that Yuri has been taken by Imugi. On the other hand, Yon, who is trying to help Jia, then goes to meet the owner of the Fox restaurant to ask about the fortune teller he has met. He suspects that the fortune teller is a judge of the afterlife. After Yon leaves, Rong comes to see him and informs him that Yuri has been taken by Imugi. At that time, he looked happy and hugged his younger brother because Rong had recovered. Sometime later, Jia invites Jai Huan and Sai Ram to meet at Yon's house. After everyone is gathered, she notices that most of Imugi's spirits are in her body. Then she talks about Imugi's plan to spread a virus that will make everyone miserable and unhappy. Yon added that their main target is currently killing Imugi's spirit and her body. He said that previously he had gotten a dagger from the judge of the afterlife that could kill Imugi's spirit without injuring her. Meanwhile, Hai Rayong, who has been hypnotized by Imugi, walks to the police station and confesses to all the crimes that Imugi has committed. After he was imprisoned, he felt his body start to be covered with red spots that made him itch. A policeman who previously interrogated Hai Rayong had a similar experience, and he was suddenly unconscious. Not long after, an egg came out of the policeman's mouth, killing him. At night, Yon and the others gathered at a restaurant to carry out their plan to summon Imugi's spirit inside Jia's body. Then they enter a room filled with spell paper. Before Yon leaves the room, Jia asks him to hug her. At the same time, Imugi's spirit begins to possess her body, so she asks for the dagger that Yon carries and stabs it into his back. Suddenly, he looked unconscious there. At the same time, Imugi's spirit in Jia's body feels pain and finds that one of its scales has fallen off. Jia, who is controlled by Imugi, then tries to move into Yon's body by inserting the detached scales into his mouth. Suddenly, Yon wakes up because it is all his plan to find out how Imugi switches bodies. At that time, Yon carried the wooden dagger as an ordinary dull knife without any power. He is now trying to move Imugi's spirit into Jia's body into the body of a snake. However, when Imugi's spirit threatens to injure Jia while getting out of her body, Yon refuses this intention. Not long after, Jia seemed to be in pain before she unconscious there. Meanwhile, Imugi feels pain out on the street, just like Jia. His body began to be filled with snake scales, and everyone he passed by suddenly died for no reason. At the Taliopa residence, she changes Jia's death date to the next day because she's so frustrated with everything that's happened. Because of that, Uyang looked angry and left her. That night, Jia gets news from Jai Huan that their boss has a mysterious disease that covers his skin in red spots and emits eggs from his mouth. Not long after, the news reported that many people were affected by the disease. Yon, who knew about it, went to meet Taluipa. On the way, he gets news from Uyang that Jia is fated to die today. On the other hand, while crossing the street, Jia would almost gotten hit by a truck if Uyang didn't help her. Rong, who saw this, felt that something big would happen because Uyang had started to get involved in doing something. As Jia and Uyang chat, he informs her that Taluipa has moved her death date forward. Hearing this, Jia looked sad and regretted her birth into a world that turned out to be a disaster. At the Taluipa residence, Yon is seen confronting her and protesting about Jia's death date. Then Taluipa says that if they want to kill Imugi, Jia must die too. However, Yon insists that he will protect Jia no matter what. Then Taluipa explained that Imugi had done things beyond their control. Feeling at a dead end, Yon just sits around Taluipa's office, looking very sad. Meanwhile, the situation is getting chaotic, and the number of victims of the viral disease is increasing. An annoyed Jia goes to the toilet to summon Imugi's spirit into her body, and threatens that they will both die soon. At the same time, Imugi asks Yuri to restrain Shinju who is assigned to watch over Jia's parents, because he will come to over Jia's parents and tell them to kill themselves. Luckily Yon soon found out about it and saved them. Soon after, Yon offers Imugi to attack Taluipa to gain a high position as guardian of the Samdo River in the afterlife. After that, he tries to trap Imugi so that they will meet each other. And if he fails to defeat Imugi, he will eat Imugi's scales and destroy himself together in the Samdo River, even though it means he will die forever. Meanwhile, Rong, disguised as a policeman, asks Hai Rayong to kill Imugi so that he can recover from the strange disease he has. Rong wanted to kill Imugi even though it was against Yon's plan. At the same time, Jia is seen caring for Sai Ram, who has caught the plague. 
After some thought, Imugi confronted Yon and agreed to attack Taliupa together. When Imugi informs him that a part of himself in Jia's body has awakened, Yon tries to calm down because Imugi threatens that their deal will fail if he leaves. At the same time, Hai Rayong then meets Jia and points a gun at her, causing Imugi's spirit in her body to awaken, and she kills him. Not long after, Jia, still possessed by Imuga's spirit, threatens Jai Huan. Then Sai Ram slaps her and revives her. <laughs> Jia then confronts Rong because she knows he asked Tai Rayong to kill her. At that time, Rong informs that Yon will sacrifice himself by swallowing Imuga's scales and plunging into the Samdo River. Meanwhile, Yon now meets Shinju and asks him to look after Jia and Rong if Yon dies. Not long after, Yon goes on a date with Jia before he fights Imugi. Suddenly, Taliupa calls Yon and tells him that there is another way to end this battle without killing Jia. After Yon meets Taliupa, she tells him to stab Jia with the sword she gave him so that Imugi's spirit and Jia's body will move into Terry's body, and that's when Taliupa will turn Imugi into stone. On the other hand, Imugi, who was in Terry's body, seemed to meet Sato to ask for a moon mirror. After getting the mirror, he came to Taliupa, who was shocked because he used Terry's face, her son's. Knowing that, Taliupa got angry with Imugi and tried to attack him, but he used the moon mirror against her. At home, Yon realizes that Jia has been possessed by Imugi. She says that part of Imugi's spirit has gone to see Taliupa carrying the moon mirror. Hearing this, Yon tries to go and meet Taliupa, but Imugi's spirit and her body has hypnotized everyone there to prevent him from leaving. After everyone woke up from hypnosis, Yon headed to Taliupa's place, followed by Ron. Arriving at her place, he finds Taliupa has become a statue due to the attack of the moon mirror. Then he uses his sword to kill Imugi. But suddenly Imugi, who is Jia's body, arrives, so he cancels that plan. Feeling that there is no other way, Yon swallows Imugi's scales so that Imugi's spirit and Jia's body moves into him. After that, Yon tried to catch Imugi inside Terry's body. When they were at the door of the Samdo River, Yon, who knew Rong was there, asked him to push himself and Imugi into the Samdo River. With a sad feeling, Rong was forced to do this. So Imugi disappeared. And Yon seemed to remember all his memories with Jia. With Imugi gone, the plague in the city disappeared, and Taliupa could return to her original form. After that incident, Jia tried to go to Taliupa's place, but she never opened the door for her. In fact, Taliupa forbade Uyang to open the door because she wanted Jia to live as a normal human. Meanwhile, Rang, who lost his older brother, continued to grieve in his room. One day, Taliupa opens the door for Jia and explains that Yon's death was his choice, but Jia believes there is a way to bring him back. Meanwhile, Shinju, seeing Rong is sad, meets him and gives him Yon's last video. The next day, Jia visits Ron to make a story about a gumiho, or nine-tailed fox. Hearing that, he agreed with the idea, and they started working on the project. On the other hand, Taliupa keeps contacting her older brother, the king of the afterlife, to ask Yon for leniency. Meanwhile, Shinju proposes to Yuri. Everyone was there, and they remembered Yon, who couldn't come to this happy day. Six months later, Jia completed a project on Gumiho stories. She received a birthday surprise from her parents who gave her a wedding dress Yon had previously entrusted to her. She looks sad as she reads the letter Yon wrote. Meanwhile, Shinju has to deal with Rong and Yuri's behavior which annoys him every day. Even so, they live like a family, and Rong continues to find ways to bring Yon back. One day, Ron takes Jia to meet the white-eye fortune teller, the judge of the afterlife, to ask for help in bringing Yon back. The fortune teller demanded payment for his request, and Rong replied that he would trade his life for Yon. After saying goodbye to his family, Rong disappeared. No 
Knowing that, Shinju and the others become very sad. Sometime later, Jia meets Yon, who has now been reincarnated as a human, and they marry. At the end of the movie, Yon woke up from his sleep and took his red umbrella to eradicate the demons in the city. Apparently, he is still reincarnated as a nine-tailed fox demon. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, to make the best use of time with the people we love before losing them.